Dungeons and Dragons has one major problem, and it's you need a dungeon master. This might be kind of unhinged, but I wanted a way of combining all my favorite game systems, all my favorite war games, RPGs, tabletop, well, whatever this is, and putting them together into one Dungeons and Dragons-esque experience. And then I think as a result, I accidentally made a DM-less version of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, but look, okay, I gotta, I gotta let you in on a little secret. I haven't actually uh, play tested this yet. I have literally just finished it. Okay, how do I explain this? Okay, well I broke rules. Now, fuck, okay. The rules, okay, nobody wants to hear rules. Instead of just telling you the rules, I'm gonna show you what it sort of feels like to me. We need candles. So instead of having one dungeon master, I thought, what if that role was spread between players? Someone takes care of a location, another a complication, another reward, and all the other players sort of manipulate the scenarios each of the players created for each other. And everyone is also an adventurer playing the game at the same time. And I realized there needs to be a hierarchy. All these players need something to answer to, and that's this fortune deck. These cards are all illustrated by me and my friends. Each card tells its own little unique story and there's 40 of them. And realistically, these cards sort of just govern who is doing what during the game, but also they have a relationship with each other. When they're laid out on the table when you're playing, they modify each other. But also, if nothing else, you can shuffle up these cards and reveal a card and that's a 19, it's a d20. The deck acts as a d20 as well. You might be asking, Trent, how do I use all my favoritest books like you described? Well, every single player gets their own card. And for every card you need a location, a reward, a complication and a weird sort of modifier word to mess with all the other cards on the table. And to get those ideas, we use our favorite books because these books have fantastic pictures, maps to steal, even something like Gaslands. Really incredible tables that would go crazy in a, in a fantasy tabletop game. <laughs> now I've made a rule book and in the back of this rule book is examples and examples of what your compilation of weird stuff could look like. And none of these things need to be related to each other because when you shuffle this deck up and you lay fortune down on the table, the narrative that unfolds is gonna be a combination of everyone's. And it's up to all the players playing to make sense of the story, fill the holes and push the narrative forward. Anyway, it all sounds good in theory. It's not play tested yet. So um, it's free and these are free. And I'm gonna show you how to make them right now. Uh, this was, I did make these a little while ago, so we're going back in time. My recommendation is to get these professionally printed, but you can do it on your home printer just fine. When I was prototyping these cards, you can see they're quite flimsy. They don't really feel very good. I worked out that we needed like a core piece of paper between the front and the back, right? This is spray adhesive. We're going to use this to glue our cards together. Take our front, our middle bit, glue them together. Now all of these are backed onto card. We need to work out how to get this card back onto this and align it correctly. Now I've come up with one way to do this. There might be better ways of doing it. I don't know how real print shops do it, but I've designed these cards with trim marks on them and these little round dots, I've worked out that you gotta take a pin and puncture right in the middle of that. What are you doing? I need to puncture all these holes. Mm. 
Now we do the same with the backs. We poked all these little holes in each of the pieces. Now we gotta line these holes up. Boop, boop, boop. I like to make sounds when they're lined up. All right. If you're having trouble adhering these pieces together because you know your palms are a bit sticky, you're a bit sweaty, you're just eating a big sausage roll, meat pie, chuck a bit of tracing paper on there and Bob's your uncle. Okay, these are all glued together. We can cut these out now. On the corners of these pages are crop marks. And we just need to cut across that inside trim mark. Start from the inside out though. So we trim in the middle, this middle, and then we could do the outsides. You're gonna need to do a couple of passes. We end up with four cards. Here we are, 40 cards, cut, ready to be weathered now. Now you don't have to weather your cards, but I think it goes a really long way to making these feel like real artifacts, real sacred objects. I wanna take the edge off this pure white a little bit. So in this ice cream container, I have just a little bit of water and coffee, instant coffee. You don't want to soak them, you just want to get them a little bit coffee-y. These will dry much darker. Now we're going to clean these off. Each card is going to look a little bit different from each other in terms of the weathering and the staining. And that's quite cool too, I think. So it was actually at this point where I got a little bit distracted and uh, I never actually finished the final product of the cards because I got too excited and started making this crazy uh, RPG mod, but I'm gonna show you them right now. Here are the cards, look at them. They look just like they've come out of an old board game, all weathered on the back. Every single one of these cards all a little bit unique. The art is from my friend Ems, the wonderful street artist, my friend Riley, uh, Rachel did the borders, and then I sort of just cobbled everything together with bad doodles and ideas from my notebook. Uh, I am just so, so very happy with how they turned out. And I'm gonna use them for things that aren't this mod. Also, I'm just gonna use them as a D20 or something. I'm bloody, I'm really happy. I'm really, really happy.